Mark from the States, Mark from the States, it's Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Mark from the States, how are we doing today? I am doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are truly amazing. Today's going to be special. Come sit on this big fit couch with me. and We're going to have a conversation with Ben and Rachel Miller. They are from Off Day Adventures, and you'll remember them from their Hiking the Cotswold Way series, 102-mile hike through just beautiful scenery, history, pubs, the whole bit. It was so much fun to watch them. We're going to have a nice little chat with them today, talk about their experiences, what they thought. I'll get to the questions that hopefully most of the questions that were submitted, I'll get to them uh, from all of you. We'll talk about a few other things and maybe some uh, what their future plans are. And uh, it, it should be fun. So stick around and let's do it. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Uh, of course, here we are with the world famous Ben and Rachel Miller from Off Day Adventures. And you will know them, of course, with their trip to the UK and their hiking of the Cotswold. 102 miles. Honestly, whose idea was this? And who signed off on this? That's amazing. Just the thought yeah. of 102 miles is just mind-boggling. Yeah, I think, it, was it my idea? I think, so it started with a trip we had taken um, to England. Um, the goal was just do the, some sightseeing. We knew we wanted to hit London and, you know, see the sets. I had been when I was like two or three, but, you know, no, no real memories there. And I don't think you had been at that point. But we decided we also wanted to see something a little more off the beaten path while we were out there and did some research and, you know, learned about the Cotswold, saw the pictures and was it just, we were blown away by it. Chip in Camden, I think was just kind of where we landed. I think because of a Rick Steves video yeah. actually. Okay. Um, and it was while we were out there and I think learning about that place that, Hey, we learned about all of the public paths in general. And we did some walking on the Monarchs way mm -hmm. while we were out there. But that was also when we learned it was the, the top of um, the Cotswold Way, yep. which, you know, we just, we learned about it and it kind of was like, oh, that would be kind of cool. And the thought that like planted a seed mm -hmm. and it just kind of kept festering in there over time. And yeah, that, that trip was in what, 2021? Yeah. And we thought like, oh, one day we will do that. Mm -hmm. And then every day after that trip, we were like, what if we just did it? Like, yeah. there's so no from way. 2021 up until last year uh, yeah. is how you kind of were like, okay, we're going to act on this at some point. Yeah. yeah. So it was about a year. To do it. Yeah, yeah. It was about a year, year and a half of kind of dreaming about it and thinking, oh, that would be cool. And then about, I think a little less than a year of, okay, let's actually mm -hmm. look into making this happen. And once we started looking into it, it just, it all kind of fell into place. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We, That's we so cool. Yeah. So you finally said, okay, we're pulling the trigger. Mm -hmm. Now, are there different variations of this hike? I know from what we've all heard from the people who live up there, people just kind of hop on for the day and they make mm -hmm. it sound like it's this like, you know, mode of transportation or whatever. They just hop on for the day to do a, a two hour hike or have you now are there whose whose idea was it or did was it somebody suggested uh the a travel agency that allowed you to uh, because when you said oh they there's a way to uh book this whole experience where they move your luggage from hotel to hotel or be uh uh, I can't even think of uh, of those. What are those places called? <laughs> Where you rent the house? Oh, like an Airbnb. Thank you, yeah. Airbnb. Um, is that something that you had he even thought of way at the beginning, or was this something you just kind of found out as you looked more into it? That's a good question. I feel like. There was no time where we thought, we'll just book everything ourselves. I think pretty early on, we Googled, like, Cotswold Way Trail. And immediately, it was like, 
someone will set it up for you. You just pay one fee and it's luggage transportation. It's all of your B and B's. You don't have to think of anything. And it was like, well, yeah, that's way easier. And it, you know, it wasn't oh, yeah. so expensive that it was out of the question. It was, we'll either pay to have someone transport, like transport our luggage some magical way, and then book hotels somehow. Someone just knows the era, area and is doing it. So it, I think like right away we knew that's how we were going to do it. It's a and brilliant that, idea. It really yeah. is. That's a good point, though, is when we first started thinking about just conceptually, like, okay, let's go do this hike, it was pretty daunting because in my head it was like, you know, you're camping and you just have everything on your on your back, like doing the Appalachian Trail or something over here. And, you know, we were like doing that on the other side of the world, you know, just sounds crazy and like logistically very difficult having to pack everything and you know, so it was pretty daunting at first, but once we yeah. learned about that aspect of it, it made it all seem a lot more doable, manageable for, for us, you know, mm -hmm. for people flying in from, from far distances, mm -hmm. I'll say. Yeah, it is something that when you first say, yeah, come do this 102-mile hike, granted you finish in Bath, which is one of those cities that you just kind of have to experience to mm -hmm. to believe mm -hmm. um but the fact of oh gosh where are we gonna stay do we have to you know carry everything on our backs do we camp in the wilderness what, what what's the deal here but it, it the fact that you mentioned they bring your luggage to each oh, that's yes it's so huge. Great. and that takes me into our first question uh from carol and she had mentioned asked them uh, would you ever consider camping uh, say doing the English coast to coast because that's a popular along with the Cotswold the coast to coast trek is a very popular touristy thing to do or like Liam Brown did uh, the Hadrian's Wall walk mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that is her question. And, and, and I know you can't just go, yes, actually we are going, you know, I'm not expecting that sort of an answer, but this then leads into another follow up is I am sure there are a lot of people who have commented and said, what is your next mm -hmm. trip to the UK is that they enjoyed you guys so much that they just want you to come back and sooner the better, of course. So if if that is a possibility, you can. You don't have to say per se what you want to do, but a, a simple yes or no, I think, would be satisfactory to a lot of people. It's like, yeah, we would, you know. Oh yes, the the short answer is yes. The longer answer is we would do every hike in England if we could. If we could, yeah. We I mean, love. was the hike really that enjoyable though? Yes. Yes. It was so different than anything you really get to experience over here. Just the, the, the landscape, but also the, the, in the climate, but it's the towns and it's the people, you know, and it's the pubs you get to see and, and hit and the history that's there. Just, it was also unique for, for us. And I think that was the, the big reason why we, we fell in love with it. And it's, it, yeah. it easily could get very addicting. To answer the initial question, absolutely. I would, I would be open to camping. I do think it would be more difficult to figure out the logistics of that for us and like yeah. what to pack and how to pack and like figuring all that out. But if we could make it work, especially now that we have one hike kind of under our belts and like we know how it all goes, I absolutely would, would do it. Dude. Right, right. And that's the thing. It's, it's, it's a lot of work planning these trips. Even though you, it seemed like you used maybe a travel agency or maybe not, but some company that at least made the journey from low stop to stop from night to night easier. It's still a lot of logistics mm -hmm. and a lot of planning, uh, prepper, you know, preparing. So it's, it, you know, especially it's not like just going to London for seven days and seeing all the sites within London, which is something I hope to do here next year. But I couldn't imagine having to hit all the sites that you guys did and plan that out. It's just incredible, really. Uh, David, of course, wants to know, uh, this is kind of the same thing. When are they coming back? 
uh, I enjoyed their videos a lot, and I'm sure you get a lot of those comments as well. Ra this is this is for you, Rachel. Uh, she was so stoic in her first few videos. I'm assuming she could have been British. Yes, and I'm glad she made it. So, to add to that is the support you got from doing. Uh, I I remember you saying at the beginning this was kind of for friends and family to kind of mm -hmm. give them a a vlog, if you will, of just so they can follow along and no one expects other people that you have never met in your life to ever take an interest in what you're doing. How, explain how that has kind of changed your whole view on continuing on doing what you're doing. I, I can't, I don't know how to answer that because it was so, we were so shocked at everyone who first cared about what we were doing mm -hmm. and then had so many nice things to say. And I felt like I complained the whole time, but happy to see that people didn't feel the same. Um, it, it's funny hearing someone describe Rachel as stoic too, yeah. because that's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's well, personality, but that was just all the pain she was feeling while we were out on that hike. I think kind of all her energy was focused just on survival instead of right. yeah. you, know, you had to have gotten a lot of people who were caring uh like concerned um with their comments <laughs> because they were telling me how concerned they were for blisters and and some speaking from experience of doing the hike you know themselves mm -hmm. but it seemed to me that they were just almost like cheering you on and hopefully you got to see that as well we felt that so much. And every single comment we get, I read out loud to Ben. I'm like, you're not going to believe what this really nice person said. So every, like, seriously, we have read everything. I try to respond to everything because it's, it's blowing my mind just how nice everyone is. And the pictures I have of my blisters are so gross. I did not put those in the video. Like, that's just, it's just so nasty. It was disgusting. I, I was... I should not have completed it. it was, uh, and I think as a, a viewing audience, we're happy that you didn't. Yeah. 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 It's a credit it's to okay. Rachel. I, if I had those kinds of blisters on my feet, I would have been in unbelievable because I've experienced blisters like that before and the pain is brutal. So the fact that she started getting those things on like day two, day yeah, three, really. you know, they got real yeah. gnarly just a couple well, days in and still knocked it out. Was I was, I was blown away. I was also concerned through the whole hike, as were you, and it sounds like many others. So I was keeping a close eye on her the, the whole time. Hopefully yeah, you didn't want to have to be carrying her, uh, you know, halfway through. All of a sudden, you're doing piggybacks just yeah. to get to the next location. That's uh, it's not a uh, thought that you, I mean, especially when you're kind of out there on your own. Even though you you do mention you do see people um, crossing paths and whatnot. Um, the there is that thought of what if something were to go on, twist an ankle, um, you know, something like that to where, was that something that you'd have planned in a, already in advance of kind of a, what we're going to do if something like that happened? Our, our, the, the agency we booked with, I think they had like a phone number that if at any oh, time we needed assistance, like call them. There was one time on day two where we were in the middle of nowhere and I was almost, I almost passed out from the heat. I'm, believe it or not, I live in Florida, but I am extremely sensitive to the heat. I, I have fainted several times outdoors. Just oh part no. Of, just part of being me. Um, so on day two, there was, it was Bella's nap. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. You'll see me, I'm sitting on the ground in the shade, in danger. Like it was, we were close. Yeah. It was so hot. From yeah, fainting. Yeah. yeah. That, that was the peak of the heat and that whole it's a big climb up and then a decent height kind of across but it's all totally exposed there's very little shade anywhere so the heat was was brutal that day that was the only time i was really like really worried yeah. about you and like will we need to call someone the nice part was we had first aid kits and, and plenty of water things like that but we were never out of um cell service so it never felt like if something, you know, if there was an ankle twist or something happened, it never felt like we were in danger. Yeah. You know, it always felt like there was something or someone close enough by that 
in an emergency we could figure something out. Mm-hmm. So it, it felt pretty safe yeah. from that from that point of view. So when you get to Bath, uh, you still stayed a couple days longer after that, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. Um, were you? Did you have the energy to even tour the city of Bath? Yes, I'm taking this one. Um, so we get to Bath, and I told him when we planned the trip, what did we say, three extra days yeah. or four? Mm-hmm. Three or four extra days. I was like, the first day, we're not doing anything. We're laying down. Yeah. Don't even try, nothing is going on, then we will explore. We get to Bath, the next day we do everything in Bath. I don't know what it was, we had the energy, I was totally fine. Um, so we spent way way more time in Bath than we probably needed because we did everything we needed to do early on. And I wish we had recorded it now that everyone cared about it. I was like, ah, oh, opportunity missed. Like It was a great time, but no one will know about it. I'm glad you mentioned recording because that leads me into my next question is how is the balance between enjoying because at the, at the core of it all, it's a vacation. It's a, an adventure, if you will, something that you're experiencing for your own personal, you know, happiness. Where's the balance come into filming to allow us to enjoy it with you and enjoying the actual you know, vacation, if you will. Yeah. Um, so that was actually something we talked a lot about leading into the trip. We knew we wanted to record things and, and make these, these videos to commemorate the trip, but we talked a lot about, I don't want to get so caught up in having to record every little thing that we're not in the moment and kind of losing sight of the, the bigger picture. So, I think, A, just kind of being aware of that going into it made a big difference. And then really once we got into it, so much of what we ended up recording beyond camera facing us and talking to the camera were just the sights and the landscapes and things that if you're not making videos, you're prob- probably going to whip your phone out and start taking some pictures and videos anyway. True. Since yeah. you're friends, you know, so it didn't feel like it was a lot of added work. And the nice thing for me, this was a light bulb that went off in my head on like day three or four. She's very experienced making videos like this. I am, I am not. I didn't really know what to do. Around day three, I think in the morning, I turned to Rachel and I was like, I can, you, you can edit stuff out. So I can just start rambling. I can just word bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and according to Rachel, you are a rambler. Is that I, correct? I, I, okay. I, and I'll, I'll tell you, like I'm, I'm you know. I've, I've accepted that uh, as a part of personality <laughs> a long time ago. I'm doing it right now. But, um, uh, but yeah, so she said, honestly, please do, because that's how, you know, you want to have a lot of footage and then you can start to, to narrow it down. So we'd be walking, especially on like a flat stretch or somewhere we've already kind of gotten the landscape. I would just start babbling about whatever was at the top of my head, something I'd learned, rugby, yes. you know, the beer mm-hmm. or whatever it was. I was able to just go. For every two minute story Ben told that I put on YouTube, there's a 45 minute version. No I am way. not, I'm not gonna, I'll do like that. That's a, you gotta save that for the extended, uh, you know, DVD release. You can yes. have that extra <laughs> bonus footage. Yeah. No one's gonna well, that, to watch that. Like, you're right. <laughs> People will watch it, guarantee it. Um, that kind of, okay, so, you're kind of rambling. Of course, you want to kind of hit all the moments as you're going from, and I'm just going to say that each day, mm-hmm. there's a lot of history, as you know. Uh, just You can basically walk out your hotel room or your B&B and throw a rock and hit something that's a thousand years old. Was that something you were cognitive or... It, and actually did some research on, or was this like a night by night? Okay, tomorrow, this is where we're going. This is, you know, these are the, the, the high points that we need to maybe see or point out, or how had that work for you? It, it's, a, it's a mix of both. I think when we did research on this area, we watched um, like some travel shows of, of people already going there and, and Kind of teaching us these things which made us want to do it and then the company that we booked with sent us a guidebook so there was a ton of information about all the places 
And then when we got there, I think we were just so overwhelmed with everything that was happening. So, you know, we're doing the hike, we're on a vacation, we need to film things. Did we say all the things we need to say? And then what was it, Cooper's Hill? Like yeah. we totally missed Cooper's Hill because we were so focused on so many things, so. And there's no going back. There's no going uh, back. <laughs> <laughs> we were there and we knew it was Cooper's Hill. In the moment, totally forgot to connect yeah. that to the, the, the cheese, the cheese rolling yeah. uh, event. Right. But that, that part was tough. There's, there's way too much to know when you're there to remember. Does that make sense? I, I think oh, so. totally. Yeah. Total yeah. sense. I think you had a lot more knowledge of European history than I did just going into the trip. I never specifically studied that like in high school or college or anything. And I think you did at a couple of points in your life. So for me, I was learning a lot of things live like as we were out there and like, as I'm kind of reading and regurgitating for the camera, I'm like, Oh, you know, Henry VIII did that. That's crazy. And you know, I'm like a lot of these things. And she's the whole time. She's like, you didn't know that. Like, yeah. how, do, how do you not know that? So for her, it was a lot of just pulling from the knowledge she already had. For me, I was just, I was kind of learning at every point. You were discovering it for the first time, which yeah. is, which yeah. is wonderful because we can see that on, yeah. on film, which is nice. And, and because that goes with the whole theme of experience, I think why it's so successful and it's not just you guys um, just the genre of watching people explore and I, I would imagine for uh, all your subscribers and fans shall we call them fans um, who live in the UK these are places they've known their whole lives and this is how I've kind of understood it doing just watching or you know reacting to stuff they've seen a thousand times is they've kind of almost uh, just take it for granted in a way. Not in a negative way, but just it's always been there and they've known it their whole lives. And then when they see the joy and the wonder on someone else who has no idea, uh, it brings it back for them. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so popular. And so that'll lead me into a question from Daniel, who would like to know if you miss anything uh, maybe like a food or a drink uh, that you discovered over there that you can't experience or get in Orlando. I miss everything. I miss everything. I miss the kindness of everyone. Um, oh, what's that beer I like? The, um, or the cider? Yeah. Yeah, you like that cider. Yeah, I remember you guys ordered that. It seemed like at every stop. Yeah, love that. Um, I had the best pasta of my life. Where was that? The Swan Hotel. Yes. And, um, oh gosh, was that, that wasn't Painsley. No, it wasn't Painsley. It was, I'll, I'll do some live research really quick. That was, I think, <laughs> not that, that You Everything. will not be, you're, you will not be graded on this, so don't you, <laughs> don't you worry. Um, and just, yeah, so many things, like, you can't walk in Orlando. You you'll get hit by a car immediately. Like we don't really have walking paths. If you want to walk somewhere, you have to drive. Mm -hmm. and then walk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't walk into a pub and everyone's friendly. Like we don't, we don't really have that. Uh, it's just different. It's just different. So there, there's a whole vibe there that I'm like, how, how do we move to England? Like, First and foremost, I haven't found it yet. But you have, yeah. You'll have to like—I don't know if you can put text on the screen okay. or anything, but please. Here it is. It. Yeah, you can, feel yeah. free, <laughs> because I don't remember, and I watched—I think I've watched all your videos maybe twice. Yeah. And uh, just to go back and and because there'll be some things I've missed, especially when the history, and that's the reason why I watch one. I, I enjoy watching both of you, of course, but then when you touch on the tower, uh, there was mm -hmm. that tower, uh, and just. One of the things I really appreciated in your videos was all the shots of the landscapes. Kind of mm -hmm. goes on. It's like it's like the it's like your co-star in this movie that you're doing. It is just unbelievable. Some of the shots you were getting of the so we, rolling hills is amazing. We watched a couple of the the videos before this to try and like get our you know get our minds back there and you were remarking how it looks like we've edited the color and like, like enhanced. Yeah. Right. And literally like it was all just recorded on yeah. our phones and not 
edited, you know, in any way. Mm -hmm. It was so green and, and lush everywhere, and the grass is soft. And I was one of the B and Bs we stayed at with, uh, with with Rosie. She had this beautiful garden, and her you know her yard was just amazing. That like dark green, soft grass. And I asked, what what do you do to to maintain your your lawn? Because we have our yards a nightmare over here. And um, mm -hmm. she's like, you you mow it. <laughs> Like that's it. She goes. Eh, occasionally, you water it if it doesn't rain enough. But like, yeah. that's just like the landscape out there. You know, it's just yeah. it's amazing. We we never stopped appreciating that through through the whole thing. And I think that's what part of what made it so fun. It's just yeah. how unique that landscape. Well, that that whole their whole uh, view of the right to roam, and you know just. There's no fences. There may be, but there's always a gate. And that was one of the things I loved about your videos was the different types of gates that you had to go through. Yeah. Fascinating to me. I don't know how many others found that fascinating, but I did. And it's just, I love the fact that they're just like, you know, you have the right to walk through our property within reason, of course. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, so you're, you're out here and it, it's not really in, well marked. I guess, or is it? it I saw you guys tap all the, you know, yeah, badges. It was the Cotswold Way is very well marked. I'll say we talked to people who have done other other hikes, mm -hmm. you know, other other paths, and have had very opposite experiences mm -hmm. to what we've had. I said early on, I think on day one, I was going to try and use our map and our GPS as little as possible. I think I said I wasn't going to try and use it at all, and we ended up using it a couple times, but. Mm -hmm. Really, it was so easy to navigate just by keeping an eye out for those mm -hmm. signs and, and you know, following them. It was, you know, I never felt like we were truly lost or no. like didn't know where to go. No, and the two times we did miss the signs, the first one, um, I think there was just some overgrowth on one of them. Mm -hmm. And then the second time, there was a delivery truck parked in front of it. So we went left when we should have gone uh. right. But you know, every 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 sign was was really well marked, um, and you don't think walking for nine days that you don't need a map or something like that. But it was right. Great. Now, were you ever like truly alone out there? Oh yeah, yeah. There were there were plenty of moments where we were the only people we could see, um, and that made it nice. You know, it's yeah. it would get so quiet, and you're just out there, you know, hiking in nature. You would hear birds chirping and things like that. But it was, I don't know, a 50-50 mix of feeling like we were the only ones out there and then seeing someone else, you know, coming down. Or And keep in mind, there's a, a lot of people will go use those trails just to, like, walk their dog because they live nearby. So a lot of the people we saw along the way were just people, you know, they, they brought their kids and their dog out for a walk, you know, and they're just kind of hanging out yeah. out there. So that was a lot of it. There was one guy, um, we were going up a big hill, and I was struggling. And there was one guy who was just easy going up. And we're like, oh, hey, how's it going? He's like, oh, just going into town to buy something. I'm like, just it's just, that's just the way he, that's the path he uses to get yeah. to the store. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, on a side note, how many of you, how many uh, people told you not to eat the berries that are low? Everyone. After we ate the low berries. <laughs> Which... Now that they've said it, I'm like, oh yeah, why did we do that? And every time we watch that part of our, our, our video, we're like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Pretty funny. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it wasn't that bad, but uh, yeah, that was it. Well, some, someone also said about just like pollution, especially ones that are near roads. Yeah, the car. Um, that they can get with the exhaust and, and stuff like that. So I don't know how true that is, but it, I guess it could happen. But they tasted so. good. I don't know. I'm it, sure. It was, are they are they as advertised? Mm -hmm. They were pretty great. The one thing, the one piece of feedback we got was they don't they don't spray you know chemicals to try <laughs> and get those things. Down. Right. That's why people are saying yeah, right. But as natural as you get. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so Jeff. Uh, would like to kind of add to that. Um, how, how did you find, I know you kind of touched on it a little bit. The people were nice, but he wanted to know, how did you find the people, the food, amenities mm -hmm. on the places that you'd stayed and the transport, if you took any transport? So I have a, a 
story on the people. So we, we had had great experiences. Everyone we had met and interacted with was very friendly. You know, we didn't have any, any negative uh, interactions with people. We got to, um, I don't remember the town now, but Rosie's B&B about halfway through. And that day we were, there was a, an intersection we were kind of trying to navigate. We weren't sure if we needed to go down this road or keep going that way. And, you know, we've got the backpacks and the hiking boots and we're kind of looking around doing one of these and busy road. This guy kind of stops his car mid turn as he's getting on onto the road and rolls his window down and he goes, Cotswold way. And we said, yeah, and <laughs> over there. And we went, OK, great, thanks. And, you know, he helped us fight. So it was interactions like that, that just, you know, people going out of their way to be friendly, lend a helping hand, things like that. Oh. So we so we got to Rosie's that day. And one of the comments she made was, I hope people haven't been too rude to you while while you've been here so far. And I was like, too rude. Are you, can, we're, you know, everyone's been so lovely. And she was an amazing. Yeah, the exact opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's funny that I, I feel like, you know, in my head, if people came to America, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm sure everyone's going to be so rude to you. But maybe they'll have a similar experience where everyone's going to be super friendly. There's a. It is a, it is a uh, something you do hear, like the Brits are rude um, or don't want to talk to you. But I think they mean a lot more people. And that's more like London based really kind of stereotypes out in the country i've heard nothing but what you experienced just people going out of their way to be friendly and that gentleman in the in the car he's probably comes across someone like that weekly uh, maybe off the beaten path and guides them back to you know where they need to be going i'm sure that happens all the time plus i think the cotswold way would help in their tourism on these smaller villages Mm -hmm. so it's a benefit to yeah. make it a pleasant experience, yes? Do you remember that lady who, I think we were walking like this way and she was walking that way, or maybe we were walking together mm-hmm. and she like passed us 10 minutes and she runs back to us and is like, hey, there's a whole bunch of cows on the path, you can't pass, but if you go this way, you'll make it through. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, so that was just like another, like she went out of her way to come back to us to tell us that we would struggle going this way and to take an, a different route. And so you, you mentioned the cows, and of course we saw a lot of interactions with sheep uh, <laughs> on your journey. It, it, was, that a, was that just a mere sideshow or more hindrance than anything? No, I think every time we showed sheep in our video is when we saw sheep. Okay. And, I, and I thought there would be more. Um, but I still don't know if sheep are mean. So we tried to avoid them as much as we could. I wouldn't say they got in the way or anything. It was, yeah. it was cool to see because that's just not an everyday occurrence for us. But yeah, it was more just, you know, you're walking along. And are this are these sheep just wild roaming or are they on someone's land that you, the, the way actually takes you through? Yeah, roaming, but on, on someone's mm. land, definitely. Yeah, Mark and everything, yeah. <laughs> Well, JJ would like to know uh, if the real, let me get my quotes in here, real England stood up to the test of their imagination before they came here. So if you had a preconceived, uh, you know, uh, idea of what England would be, did it hold up to that or did it not hold up? It it, it was better. So I have been to London a few times before. And oh, you have? Okay. I, was like, I was like, oh, yeah, I've been to, to England. It's great. It's a big city. Lovely. And then doing this, I'm like, I have never been to England because. <laughs> That's going to make a lot of people happy. Yeah. London's like going yeah. to New York <laughs> and. You know, it's a big city and that's what you get is a big city. It's touristy. Um, that's that. And then England, you're like. Is this heaven? Yeah. That was me. That yeah, was it was certain parts of it met my, so I, I kind of went into it with high expectations of like the rolling hills and the, the old pubs and, you know, all that. And it was all there, which was great. I think what, and I've said this a few times already now, but really what exceeded my expectations was the cool interactions mm-hmm. we got to have with, with people, both other hikers along the trail, you know, Americans, Canadians, people from all over. But the interactions we had with uh, local people as well really kind of was the 
I don't know, the, the, the cherry on top for a lot of our experiences. Sure. Favorite part of the trip for me was when we uh, stopped at the Carpenter's Arms mm -hmm. um, on our way, actually the same day as um, the guy who stopped his car and rolled his window down and told us, you know, we needed to yep. hang a left. Um, but we stopped in, we were near the end of our, our hike for that day. Um, it was around lunchtime. I was pretty hungry. And so we decided to, you know, it was maybe two minutes out of the way off the trail, but drink food, the place slowly filled up and every single person that either came in or was already there, super talkative. They wanted, they were asking us all kinds of questions. How, you know, are you doing the whole hike? Where are you from? You know, what have you liked so far? And just. Yeah, it was it was those kinds of interactions and getting to know, you know, uh, all these these English people from obviously vastly different backgrounds than 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 ours um, yeah. is what made a lot of it so special for me. Yeah, it was it was really cool. And so you're saying on the I'm sorry, uh, mm -hmm. Rachel. So you're saying I just want to capture what he said. Mm -hmm. uh, you met many uh, people from many different countries on Coswell Way. Is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Just just by walking and yeah. passing them. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. You end up seeing um, kind of a lot of the same people who are doing similar itineraries to you. Mm -hmm. You know, there were okay like one or two other couples that started in Chipping Camden the same day as us. So we saw them at breakfast the morning of day one and at the end of the day because mm -hmm. um, they ended in the same town as us. But then our... our our itinerary is kind of deviated, but then you sort of do this, you know, they'll pass you eventually and then you pass them. And there were people we bumped into about halfway through our hike who were, it was a Canadian couple yep. that um, we hadn't seen them the whole first half. And then we just kept seeing them mm -hmm. the rest of the way and even saw them in Bath um, yep. about an hour after we had finished. Ah. That part of it was, was pretty neat too. It adds a little sense of, camaraderie mm -hmm. there you know with those people that you also know are doing the hike that that part was neat sure and what were you going to say rachel it's gone. do you remember wait what did you say you talked about <laughs> um, oh the people yes just the lovely people the people are great i have had people comment on our our videos telling us we can stay with them if we want to come back <laughs> which in america if someone was like come stay in my house i would say no but in england i'm like this is a good idea. Yeah. You thought of you thought of it. Yeah, it's not it's not terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would actually give it some thought. Yes, yes I've I've been blessed to I've had someone offer their uh, Cooper Mini for me to drive around mm -hmm. to stay. Uh, you know, visit to, like tour personal tour guides to take me through the city of London and just I mean that is one of the things. Now you've got to meet them in person, which mm -hmm. I cannot wait to do. Um, it, one of the things that always draws me to the British people of the UK, whatever, uh, is just their generosity and kindness. They, they, you just seem like they've gotten such a bad rap, maybe, and it's just, of course, the city of London. But it, as a whole, as a people, they're just very, you know, overwhelmingly friendly. Mm -hmm. and, and it sounds like you've all experienced that as well. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Ken, Ken, here's kind of like off topic, and this is for Ben. Uh, were you ever in the military? I was not. No. My, uh, I have some uh, family members who served, um, uh, but no. But what do you do? Tell them what you do. I do. I, I work for Lockheed Martin, so it's kind of, you know, uh, military adjacent. Ish. I'll say. Yes. Uh, yeah, never, yes. never, never, never served. Um, okay. Interesting. But he's really smart. Yeah. Ben's really smart. Well, I, I'm not just, doubting that. Because yeah. I, I do, I, I kind of yeah. get that little fade thing on the sides there. And I have had people ask me if it's like a military haircut. And Interesting. I'm like, no, it's just what works on my head. Can, I guess. Can, yeah. I well, don't know why. I, don't, I want to know why you thought that. It's just something that it's ingrained in them, I believe. Whereas you can have. You know, swaths of families here in the states that had zero mm -hmm. military history in them, mm -hmm. whereas that's not the case over there. Being such an island and having to defend itself, it, it just runs really deep, and so they take, you know, 
the military very serious over there. And, uh, and that's one of the things I've loved to learn about is their military history and all that stuff. So it's very emotional and, and I think that's maybe, and of course, maybe just the way you uh, handled yourself out there, uh, attacking those hills that's, and that barking to, orders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has received some hardcore training. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> that's me, you know? <laughs> One of the things that you said, and I believe it was you, Ben, who said it was a 102-mile pub crawl. Yeah. And that, I thought, was the best line of the whole series and one is like well i'm immediately in love with ben because that is like the best thing ever because that would be like a total dream because you guys hit up no matter how tired you were there was not going to be a pub that you weren't going to at least go into and that is i am so uh drawn to the pub culture mm -hmm. and love drinking so uh i'm so drawn to that so it was really enjoyable that you at, at least made the attempt even though you were probably just gassed at the end of some of those days we still need to you know because you don't want to be coming back to the states kicking yourself going why didn't we just yeah. make the effort exactly to at and least see and say <laughs> you know you've gone there and stuff so yeah it's it's tough and then filming it on top of that, yeah. not, we were, not easy. We were, we were gassed, but we were also thirsty, you know? Yeah. So we were we were doing ourselves a favor. But that was another thing that ahead of the trip, we were like, we, the pubs have to be something that we prioritize. Because again, the, the pub culture over there, like you said, mm -hmm. is such a unique thing. And just the, the age and the history of mm -hmm. a lot of the pubs out there. So, you know, back here in the States, there's lots of bars that will try and decorate themselves like those old mm -hmm. you know english pubs but i wanted to experience the real thing and try the different you know local beers and things like that local ciders yeah. um so yeah that, that was a really fun element of the trip well to kind of go back and uh, uh talk about future uh plans um brian wants to know if you would be uh, willing to come back and do a narrow boat trip on the canal in Yorkshire if they can come back and it's easily arranged and you're laughing which I lying. hope it's going to lead that seems like you is, is, but I, you do know what the narrow boats are uh, I'm gonna go, okay um, it, it's essentially really controlled houseboating mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it would be fun since the extensive uh, canal routes that they have all throughout, especially in that part of the world and that part of their country, it would be something fun. Is that something that you would consider doing? So the couple we met day one and then uh, uh, there was a North Carolina couple, they were narrow boating after the hike. So we kind of heard firsthand how it went with them Oh, wow. Sounded fun, and should we tell them? There's, let's hold it till the end. <laughs> we'll leave it. Let's she, hold it to the end. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I I don't want you to say anything that you are not ready to uh, ready. convey. Before before we talk about that, uh, I want to hear more about this next adventure that you have decided it's uh, it is a bike ride through the state of iowa mm -hmm. now for you, all of you who live in the uk and who don't know iowa on a map doesn't look like one of the larger states in our union but when you're riding a bike it, it it's pretty it's pretty good size mm -hmm. so uh a lot of you don't know that uh, Ben and Rachel announced on uh, a video, was it yesterday or the day before, uh, that you are, uh, this is your next challenge and it's going to take some training. Mm -hmm. um, what spurred that on and uh, it looks, it sounds amazing though. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I have really bad ideas, and this was my latest idea. <laughs> oh, this is your idea. Yeah, it's, I don't know why. Um, well, there's some background. There, yeah. There's a, another, there's a YouTube channel called Kara and Nate. Um, it's a, a couple, travel the world, um, but they they did this event. 
And to, to clarify, it won't be the two of us uh, just grabbing a couple bikes and, and huffing it. It's a part of a very large mm-hmm. event that's put on every year called Rag Bry. Uh, but anyway, yeah, there was a video that Rachel had found, I think actually a, a while ago, a few years ago, yeah. um, where they did it and posted about it, and, and it looks amazing. Um, they did not train for it. They both seem like they're pretty in shape, but they did not train for it, and their bodies were, were hurting but they got through it. And so that's always been kind of a, this could be cool sort of thing. Um, but yeah, we were talking about it a couple of weeks ago and just kind of decided to, to pull the trigger on it. And then, uh, so now we're still kind of working through the logistics wow. of, of yeah. how we're going to do it. Are we going to get our own bikes and drive out there? Are we going to fly? And there's companies you can rent bikes through and kind of they'll help figure out the logistics for you. So we're, we're working all that. But as of right now, we are, committed to doing the ride and we've started we are week one of uh just completed week one of training so it's uh it's amazing it's amazing so it's gonna be is it mountain bikes or is it road i like think a, it's road bikes road, so they'll, they'll shut bikes. down the roads and there's ten thousand people that do it and you Dang. you bike to a town there's a big party you eat you eat corn you drink and then you bike a little bit more to the next small town do the same thing until you get to the town of the night where everyone camps and you just sleep in people's yards, which sounds wow. weird, but I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, it sounds weird. Yeah. Yes. It sounds, uh, well, you guys are a lot younger than me, so it sounds probably appealing to you to do. It doesn't really sound appealing to me to do. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing the ride, the bike riding. I think that would be fun. But, uh, and of course, you know, each night you're probably having some beers and, and mm-hmm. some cocktails and enjoying yourself. Mm-hmm. But uh, this the camping on the ground uh, for how long is it? A week? It's a week. Yeah, and yeah. That does not that, sound appealing. After riding a bike for you know seventy miles. Oh, long. there's that. You're you know your ass is going to be so <laughs> yeah. sore. Yeah. 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 And we recently it's gonna it's the the route changes every year, so they've covered all you know north to south, all, all parts of Iowa, but. This will be across southern Iowa, and it is the hilliest route. Oh no! They have oh, no. made so far. So. Oh we, no! When is. you think of Iowa, you think it's a flat state. No, yeah, right? That's what I thought. And, have... and we booked it, paid all the money, and then it was like, "Hey, there's nineteen thousand feet of elevation." And I said, <sighs> "What have we done?" Is it nineteen. It's nineteen thousand. Like total. Yeah, yeah, oh my god. Total. Okay. Iowa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iowa. Iowa. Who knew? Who knew? I see. We're always learning with Ben and Rachel, no matter what. Together. That's what's great. Always learning when it's together. Late. Yeah, I, I had no idea. I would. I think. First of all, I think it's a cool event, and I can't wait. Hopefully, you do, and are able to film it, so yes. we can enjoy it with you. Um, because I've never heard or seen anything as wild as that. I mean, it brings back like Forrest Gump vibes yeah. of running across the, the country and you're riding your bike with just thousands and thousands of people is just going to be nuts. And I hopefully it's not all at once. <laughs> hopefully it's just, we'll I mean, back. yeah, yeah. Well, that's the best place to be is in the back. And that way you're not being put, you know, pressured by anybody to keep moving. You can, I assume you can stop whenever you want as well. Yeah. So, and yeah, yeah. We're, well, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. And that's in July. Or support yeah. vans and things like that. And it, it sounds like it's one of those things where you have a, hey, leave the town by, you know, eight or nine in the morning, mm-hmm. but you can leave as early as you want. So I think it's one of those things where people will start getting up and just mm-hmm. kind of filtering out. And it's not just one horde all you know all going at once yeah. yeah you wonder about the logistics of something like that for that to, to close the road but they don't have to close the road the whole time from one end to the other it's just sections yeah you know each town has one day and then it's open for business after that um let's step away from uh from that for a second and what is this is more on the um the YouTube side. What, do, are you feeling any sort of demand to make content? Mm. That's a good question. Mm. I Maybe not so much a demand, but maybe like pressure or... 
demand. Maybe a feeling of guilt. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's the, I put the demand on myself. I know I don't Mm -hmm. owe anybody anything, but I, I want to do it. And then I make Ben do it. So I don't know if you feel the same. I was actually going to say the same thing. Seeing how much response we got on the Codswold videos and how fun all that's been, like meeting you and, you know, all the, the Absolutely. And interaction there, we quickly found ourselves like, okay, well, what's next? We want to, we want to try and keep this going, you know, try and keep up the, the momentum. So I would say we're kind of putting the pressure on ourselves just because we've enjoyed yeah. how this has all gone so far. Um, right. But it's worth saying also people, we've received a lot of comments literally saying, Hey, we're here for whatever you're doing next. You don't owe us anything. Find something that sounds enjoyable and you know, oh, we'll watch it. So yeah. all the, again, all the, that's cool. It's yeah. been really, been a lot of fun. To read. They've been, yeah, it's the people that I've experienced who I've, I'll watch one of your videos and I'll, I'll of course comment and, and then, but I'll scroll down to see, not to see what they really say, but who, mm-hmm. and to see if I remember or recognize some of the, the names who, regularly comment in my video because that's, you know, I, I love seeing how it's moved on to you and the same people are still following you, even though it's not in the UK, it's in Guatemala or on your cruise, you know, it's just, uh, I, I fills me with joy mm-hmm. that these people are still being supportive. And that's the one big takeaway from, from my experience on YouTube has just been, joy mm-hmm. it's been so special to go on this journey uh benny you would mentioned rugby learning rugby uh that's how i started my channel was mm-hmm. in the pandemic i was watching rugby and i'm like how the f do you even play this game and i said okay well you know i just typed into youtube create a video that says hey how do you play rugby essentially and i got thousands of people going you know a lot of rugby fans out there yeah. spent the first year learning the game of rugby learned it now i know how to play it so i kind of stopped and then someone said you should check out this on the queen or something i can't remember what switched me from sports over into like pop culture and just history and that's what it's just taken off and it's just been such a joy for me uh meeting all these people of course which led me to meet you which is a highlight for me uh the positive comments of course are always special any negatives there was Hopefully one not. there was one someone said that ben was being mean to me and ben's like yeah so no, no, I was like, that, right. that was being mean to me in my life so that was the one comment i was mad about so oh. i'm glad i have an opportunity to address this now actually there there is one clip on, uh, I want to say it's either day two or day three. Yeah. It's where the there's the sheep that gets up in, in Rachel's face. Yeah. We were sitting yeah. there eating lunch. We were exhausted. We'd been climbing a hill. We had some sandwiches in our backpack. And Rachel had the, the sandwiches. And I had sat down. And I, in my head, I was still like short of breath. And I asked for the sandwich. On the video, when you watch it back, I, it sounded so demanding. I was just like, sandwich. And, <laughs> Watching sandwich that, woman. Yeah, <laughs> I remember seeing that and going, "Ooh, do I do I sound like that?" And like, but didn't really think anything of it until a few days later, yeah. someone commented and was like, "Hey, that was a little rude." And I was like, "Yep, I'm I'm already all over it." But thanks for for calling me out on that one. That, that's <laughs> yeah. That's, that's and, well, you're, uh, uh, you're going to get a lot more. Just know. Yeah. The more you do, it's just the nature of the game. And yeah. but let me tell you, I just laugh at it. I just yeah. people have complaints of. Has anybody corrected you on how to pronounce a place yet? Absolutely, uh, I get that yep. all the time. Which is they're very, uh, you yeah, know, they want you to pronounce the town name or whatever correctly, which is awesome. I think, hey, if you're going to learn about the place, fun to learn. You should learn how to pronounce it. Right, hundred percent. The one thing yeah. to say on that, yeah. I don't know if we've gotten a lot of constructive feedback on that. I do remember reading comments that were like, "They sound so American when they say Codswold <laughs> or certain words," and they would just be like, "The way he pronounced that, ha ha ha," or something. And it's like, educate me, please, because I don't yeah. want to sound dumb on the internet. Well, right, they say right. Both, not bath. But if I say both, I feel like a jerk, and I, I just. <laughs> It's not like right. you're mocking them. Yes. Yeah, so I'm yeah, going to say right. 
Just say bath. You have to. You know what? They, they'll. I think the world will be just fine if you well, pronounce it we'll bath. We'll I don't think I'm going to change. You know, I couldn't pronounce bath. bath. You know, it's not just right. sounds sounds wrong. Yeah. yeah. Right. It almost sounds like you're uh, making fun of them by pronouncing it that way. Um, I think that might be. Uh, how, well, before we go. Before we go, I think I'm getting near the end. Of, a lot of the questions, like I said, were kind of just repeats worded differently of how'd you think of the Cotswolds? Why would you think of England? Mm-hmm. What did you think of the people, food? What did you miss? I think we covered pretty much all of that. Uh, Hugh, Brian, Ken, I just want to name off some people to get them shout outs. Debbie, Claire, David, Carol, JJ, uh, Jeff, I think I already mentioned it. Daniel, Paul, uh, Sam was out there. Uh, and others there's i got a whole list of names but uh all were kind of you know asking around the same things and i think they just were very happy to watch you and i think they're happy to see you enjoy yourselves um it's something that a lot of them have said that they take for granted and Mm -hmm. and you specifically kind of bring that joy back to them and i think that's what makes your videos so relatable to them and exciting to watch and then for me i just love you both as people and i think you just uh, work so well together that makes it really good tv and i cannot wait to see this trip to iowa i've never been to iowa myself um so it should be pretty exciting so you're gonna have to get new equipment um, we have tested things. Oh, okay. Yes. No. So you said, if I if I if I remember correctly, you said you filmed the whole Cotswold thing just on your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. No. Do you have the iPhone? You have an it's iPhone. iPhone thirteen or fourteen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything. And she does have that's a amazing gimbal attachment. Yeah. So we've got okay. So you had a high tech self basically. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. That helped keep everything smooth and help with those panning shots. But yeah, it was all yeah. just just on the phone. I wish we had a microphone. There was some parts mm-hmm. where you can't really hear what we're saying. Sure, that's that's the down. So yeah, you gotta get one of those uh, yeah. lapel mics or yeah. something like that. Um, did you feel any of like uh, was it? Well, I know Rachel, you're not shy, obviously. Uh, when it comes to being in front of the camera, but just the the first times, I mean, your very first episode of just going to the airport, filming on the airplane, and was there like some ounce of self, you know, so you know, being self conscious, you know? It's uh, so uncomfortable. <laughs> it takes yeah. a lot of getting used to. It's unnatural. Yeah, it's, it's been really tough. And what was nice about the hike, the the Cotswold way, was a lot of the time you're out there by yourself, so it's it's a lot easier to point a camera at your face and start rambling when there's no one listening to you. No one there. Whole, whole different story when you're in a busy airport or in a, a, a city like Bath where there's you're surrounded by, by people the whole time. So that definitely takes some getting used to. And I think there's some, uh, I just, I don't want to be that obnoxious person in like a big crowd that's making a huge scene out of point a camera at myself and, and doing a whole thing, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to get comfortable kind of finding that, that balance. I will say, I also am very uncomfortable doing that because part of me feels like, really? Oh yeah. It's weird to be like, Hey everyone. It does feel weird. We're doing yeah, this you're thing. right. And everyone's looking at me and I'm so sorry. Uh, we went to Epcot yesterday and I said, Ben, let's make a video. And he was like, please don't make me. We did it. <laughs> It does feel weird. So just know yeah. when we put a video out there and there's people around, it took a lot for us to do that. Well, you, you make it yeah. seem effortless. You really do. And uh, I know you have some experience in that field, in that industry as well already. So um, I do watch you and your sister uh, yap mm-hmm. uh, on your show, which is awesome. And, uh, and, and I think I saw a short of Ben jumping out of a, uh, was that you jumping out of a, a raft onto a rock or something? Yeah. Well, falling. And falling into the water yeah. jumping or something falling. like that. It probably was a while ago, maybe. Uh, and he's the, like sh- shorts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, I find, I come across one of your guys' shorts. I'm like, oh, oh, 
Jeez, Ben, what the heck, dude? You're going to hurt yourself. I'm, I'm an adventure <laughs> seeker sometimes, you know? Yeah. I need a little thrill. Well, <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, current plans, Iowa. Anything else? Uh, oh, before I we get to this, one of my favorite commenters, and I, I even wrote a little note and I totally skipped over it, is I, I made a video about one of your videos mm -hmm. reacting to it and i got the best comment from your mother ben <laughs> yep yeah yeah well so she's a sweetheart you you she's have to best. you have to know mark when i i got a text one day while i was at work and not long after all the videos got posted after you had made your first reaction video and it was basically just, and I was only able to look at it quickly, but Rachel said, there's a guy on YouTube posting <laughs> videos to our stuff. And my immediate thought was, oh crap, what, what is this gonna turn into? What did we do? What good? did we do? <laughs> is it gonna be good, is it gonna be bad? And so we watched the first one and just loved it. I mean, loved your video, it was so much fun, like watching you react to what was such an awesome trick for us. Mm -hmm. And we quickly started, circling that, you know, uh, passing that around our family uh, circles and saying, hey, you got to watch this video, this guy, Mark from the States, you know, the whole thing. And so anytime you posted a video, there were like texts to 20 different people going, like, Mark posted another one. And like, you know, we had the whole family like jumping on YouTube and, and watching it. So my parents awesome. are, are big fans yep. of, of yours and, and your videos as well. Yep. Like, well, she was, she's so sweet. Uh, I mean, she just was really happy that you guys got to experience what you did. And uh, it was really nice of her to comment on the video. And it was awesome. So <laughs> it was really good. Um, really cool. She she does have a request, though. She's, she wants to know she'll react to all of our videos because she wants more. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure he only does, like, English things, but... Uh, I mean, I could certainly, uh, do that. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. Um, the, the core of, the, core, yeah. of, uh, the people who watch anything from me, they live in the UK. Mm -hmm. I think I have like 1.% of people in the States it's watching it's anything I do. Family. Yeah. Family. But with that, means, yeah, and it's your family. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what that means though, is we need to get back out to the UK so we can give you some more stuff to, yeah. to react to. Wait, I, hold on, hold on. I hear some breaking news coming in. <laughs> yes. Bah, 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 bah. Do you have anything to, to say? Would you like to announce anything today? See, if I say it, then it's real. Oh, jeez. All right, All right. Plan, you put it out there, yeah. The plan, our, our dream, what we want to do, we want to narrow boat in the fall. You do want a narrow boat, which is why I was laughing so hard when you asked the question. I thought, oh my gosh, who asked that question? That was, uh, who asked the narrow boat question? Somebody asked, uh, Brian. Brian. Was it Brian? It was Brian. I'm not yeah, you, Brian. You got I'm a good Brian. memory. It was not me. Um, You're right. It was Brian. That, yeah. He nailed it. That's what we were thinking is, um, to do that later this year, pending time off. Can we save up? What else sure. is going on in sure. this life? But that is that is the plan, mm -hmm. everyone. We don't know where yet. Um, we're playing with a couple cities. Not Bath. We won't do Bath because yeah. we've already been to Bath. But mm -hmm. that said, mm -hmm. this is a good opportunity for people like Brian or any of your other viewers who are going to watch this, Mark. We could use recommendations for how to plan a trip like that, any services we should go through, do it. place it, where should we do it. Things like that. So let's put a let's get like a PSA out there for we need we need advice on how to how to plan that and how to pull that off. How to drive a boat. You've just opened up the can, <laughs> sir, uh, and uh, they will be coming in like hotcakes. Yeah, they will have suggestions that will be mind blowing because there'll just be so many of them. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited, and I'm not even going. That's yeah, awesome. I can't yeah, maybe, wait to follow. Maybe we should all go. Let's think about this because I think it's like six people. Here's the thing. I would love to do that because I would love to hang out with you in person. Um, my son is going to Scotland, 
uh, Ireland, Scotland, and London in four months. We're paying for him to go with his school. Uh And then we're planning on going the following year. I can only afford one European trip a year. Um, So as much as I would love to, I'll have to settle Mm -hmm. for maybe uh, we get over to Orlando and you could show us the sites out Mm -hmm. there. Um, But uh, yeah, I don't, I'll have to sit and watch, I believe the narrow boat adventure, but I, I am giddy with excitement. I hope really you do. Am. And I know, I know, I don't, I don't know if you heard that collective, well, you won't hear it because no one's watching this, but when they do watch this, mm-hmm. you're going to hear a collective roar of mm-hmm. excitement and people excited that you're coming back. And I, I just hope you realize how much people enjoyed. And this is going to, you think it's crazy now. You're going to go back and do something they, because narrow boating is not, something a lot of people do like countries yeah right yeah so it's kind of uniquely british Mm -hmm. and if you're going to go back and do that that's gonna blow their minds and they're going to be very very happy so prepare to happen now that's that's we're we're like 80 percent in stand by everyone let's make sure we can do it first and it it sounds fun yeah that sounds i mean it's 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 not like riding a bike, but it's going to be, you can certainly drink the whole time while you're doing it. You can, your, your bus not, and the muscles aren't going to be sore. You know, it's just going to be awesome. And you're going to see just amazing places mm-hmm. that normally you would probably never care to see, you know, if you're out there planning a trip, yeah. those aren't going to be the places you poke at and you're going to come across places going, wow. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. And so I'm excited for you both. I really am. Well, this has been fun. Thank you so much for doing this and taking the time. I hope we can do this again. I would love to interview you guys after Iowa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Oh yeah. That's in July. That's in July, but we're, we're kind of putting together our training videos by week. Um, so there will be content out there for, for everyone. Oh, great. Great. Um, yeah, but- yeah, I loved watching you in Guatemala. I thought that was incredible. Uh, I was way off when you said, guess where we're going. It was a three-hour flight, and, I, you know, Guatemala. Of course, being on the West Coast, I'm thinking, you know, I, I didn't realize Guatemala is so close mm-hmm. by, by air yep. uh, to Florida. Uh, so I wasn't think I was thinking like Caribbean, somewhere like an island in the Caribbean somewhere. So yeah. it's really fun. Well, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. No, thank this you. has been a joy for me. I hope you realize that. This, this... And let's let's keep in touch. Yes, uh, for sure. Please. We'll just do one and, of these uh, every month. And there you go. Just, I, I want to know. Uh, yeah. I want to know what's going on with you guys. Yeah. And uh, this has just been awesome. Thank I... you. Uh, maybe I can get some of my family members to join me next time. There you go. Well, I, uh, we have to say, to... like, thank you for everything there were so many like layers to this trip it was we were so excited for planning Mm -hmm. and then we were so excited Mm -hmm. to be on the trail and then i was so excited to put our videos out there and watch them but then what we weren't expecting was you to come in and then see people watch it and that like that was if not as great as the whole trip itself like you just you just changed the game for us well i hopefully i'm in i'm i'm tiny uh, like channel wise and, and sphere of influence, I've got nothing. But hopefully, some people came over and, and yep. stuck yeah. around. You know, and that's that's all I can have. You know, that's been fun seeing like our channel grow has been cool. But really, the fun part for me is getting to relive our trip with yeah. these kinds of discussions. You know, mm-hmm. it makes it that much greater that we have all these memories and we just get to keep rehashing them and talking through them. And mm-hmm. I, I love telling all these stories and. Hearing the questions, even if it's the same question, yeah, just ask different ways. You know, it's it's so- yeah, it's like the trip that never ends. Exactly, yeah. reliving the trip has been awesome. So yeah, Th- thank you so much for for doing all this and for being so great. This is thank you, a lot of fun for us. You guys are you guys are amazing, really. Um, have a great rest of your day, and let's talk very very soon. I, I know we'll be in contact with through email for oh, sure. Absolutely, uh, but I I love this face to face. This is great. Thank you. Cool. All right, you too. Take care. Bye, everyone. See you, Mark.
Wow, that was so cool. Thank you so much to Ben and Rachel for for allowing us to have this chit chat today. I am uh, so excited for their future adventures. Can you believe it? Narrow boating. You asked for it. You're getting it. Coming to a screen near you. Off day adventures. Coming back to the UK. That is awesome. Awesome news. Um, thank you to everyone who submitted questions. I know I probably didn't get to all of them. A lot of them were uh, roughly, you know, asking the same thing. So, and they, we kind of just went on a wide range of uh, topics and which covered a lot of them. So, uh, if you didn't hear your specific question, I apologize. But uh, hopefully, what you were asking got answered. Uh, there were so many of you that I. I know I forgot to mention a lot of you, so but just know it is appreciated that you all come along and hang out and watch with us. Uh, this uh, this was a lot of fun, so thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us today. Hope everybody's happy, healthy, and safe, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye. Mark from the states. Mark from the states. It's Mark. Yeah.